All right, Corey, what we doing here? I'm a wart monger. I'm about to taste the wart. You're a what? Wart monger. W R T monger. What is, what is a wart monger do? Someone who that loves to drink wart. <laughs> so the, the wart is all the juice, the beer, the unfermented beer that comes off of all this. Right. So I feel like I need to taste it. I ain't never had wart. Me either. I might Me be either. a wart monger. It tastes, it tastes like just like kind of like it's, a sweet hot, grainy tea. We're going to convert us all into wart mongers. <laughs> Forget the beer. Give me the water. Today, we're out here with Rod from Off The Wall. He's brewing us up something special. And we had just finished doing the second crush and we're getting ready to check the temperature. So what we got, bro? All right, so we got our uh, strike water up to temp. Um, it's sitting at about 170. Uh, so we're gonna wait maybe like five, six more minutes with the top off. Um, once we get it down to about 167, we can drop these grains in here, start our hour mash, and start a drinking. Yeah. So you out here today? We're gonna be drinking a few different beers, but we're gonna start today with Sankufa Beer Company. This is their Harmattan Haze. It's a wheat ale. So let's pour up and get ready to enjoy a little bit. Oh, oh, that's pretty good. All right. So we're sitting at about one sixty-four. Um, so we can actually go ahead and drop in. We're a few degrees below target, but that's fine because we need to cool it down. So we can get the party started. Okay. So what song you gonna be? What's my job as, as the I, master? As I pour in, you just gonna make sure there's no need to go balls. Oh, oh, like making grits. Yeah, just like okay. grits. Yeah. This is like making grits. You gotta stir as you add. Yeah, because if you be... don't, it's gonna clump up. Yeah, we don't want no. We don't want no clumpy beer. Like we don't want no clumpy grits. Stir, baby, stir. I'm stirring. That's it. I'm stirring. Ain't no clumpy beer here. Turn up, man. Doing the other night. This what I wanted to do in the cold the other night. Yeah. Okay. But we cleaned it through, so this one will connect to this one. Uh huh. And um, we'll run the run it. It just we'll pumps pull, all the liquid. Yeah, we'll pull it out slowly because what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start this one and get it heated up to about 175 degrees, because that'll be our sparge water. Okay. And we're going to attach another uh, little arm piece to the side of that, and we'll be adding water to this as we're pulling it out from here. Mm. So okay. So we rinse our grains, and then our final volume here should be around seven and a half to eight gallons. And this is just water right now? Hmm? That's empty or Yeah, this water? is all the way empty Okay. Right so um, this will be our boil kettle. This is where we uh, actually boil everything. Okay. And then from there, we put it into one of the fermenters, and we're good to go. So this is more of a steep, mm -hmm. like you're making tea essentially. Yeah, yeah just like okay. that. Okay. So you heat it up and over the course of the hour, it cools down and draws all the whatever. Doesn't even really cool down. Like I might drop, because the temperature I want to check, um, I'm going to check the temperature in a few minutes because we want to make sure it's around 150 degrees. Okay. 155, no more than 155. Because the water is, like I said, it was 164. Adding the grains that are lower temperature going to mm -hmm. drop the temperature some but it's gonna be in the ideal temperature for the uh, sugar extraction. Okay, so ideally you want it to kind of maintain temperature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Hmm. So yo, Corey just rolled up from Soul Brothers. Check this out. He just bought some brown ale with him. He's like a little something to help us as we brew this beer. <laughs> the legend, the legend. Hey, man. <laughs> you can't show up nobody out there to handle it. You can't go to the store. So, hey, I brought a kid. <laughs> That's how it go down here, bro. And he said, I ain't coming empty-handed. Not doing it. Oh, my God. Mom and daddy raised it better than that. Bro, he came hard with it. He came hard with it. So, we're about to enjoy some Soul Brothers brews right here, right now. We got some treats coming for you. Ultimately, what we're gonna do is uh, I'm getting this water ready. Uh, we, like I said, we mashed in at about 11, about oh, 10, I'm sorry, 10. Uh, so 11, we're gonna hook up the barge on, start the transfer, and let this get to about 175 ish. Where you, where you, where you have your track water at, right here? Strike water, I start strike water. You start strike water there? Uh, I just okay. started in there so that way it can keep the mash done already. So that way I'll be able to hold temperature a little bit better. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. What I wanna do is um, basically what I'm about to do now is just pull off some of the, the wart that we have here. Pull it out and then pour it back on top because I want the green bed set all to make sure that nothing, a lot shouldn't get through, but I want to make sure of that. So that's what we're about to do right here. Yeah. Let's 
called Vorloff. This is called what? Vorloff. Vorloff. Yep. So you see, you got a little bit of sediment coming through. So the next next go round I do it, it should be even less. And once he's finished, so you won't even know until later on. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When, when, it's, when it's too late. He's enjoying the beer, you be like, oh, damn it, that ain't right. Outside average, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Yeah. So we have to be, be, be careful during the process. But, but do you a, steer at this point? Yeah, you can stir it, but, yeah, you you but you want to just decrease the amount of uh, agitation. Got you it. See what I'm saying? That's why when you go to the brew house, those those rakes inside the mass, they turn real slow. Real slow, slow yeah. Real slow. Okay. This is dope, man. And just think that 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 they did it first. <laughs> right. Women. Mm -hmm. And uh, to this day, nobody know how long women brewed right. before. Of course. Men were allowed to brew. You want to give us some guap for doing what we do? Yeah. I'm going to take it. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and that started the, the whole reformation uh, process. Oh, so it's going to transfer it through those? Yep. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Yeah. Well, we done came up came from up. the old days. Yeah, yeah. Don't feel good, don't you? It feels good, boy. I remember being in the kitchen like, oh, you oh, hold it. Hold it at this Bring angle. it down here. Pick this up. Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> but then my thing was, I'm a creator. I want to food truck. That's what I want. I like. I love cooking. Wow. I'm cooking here. Yes. But I'm cooking a drink. Makes sense. <laughs> but she's like, try making your own. So I, uh, wow. Well, what, four or five years ago at this point, she bought me a little monster, uh, monster shelf, a uh, bookshelf, uh, brewery thing. Wow. I tried yeah. it out. We tasted it. It's like, it's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> so then I went to the brew store and, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah. Brew Depot. Brew Depot. That's yeah. Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Bob. Yeah, went up there. I got my first kit from. Let's see what the QA, the first QA says. Remember we had to pick up uh, the bag to be able to rinse the grains and all that? That's what this is. Oh, shucks. Wow. That's the bag Y'all big time, Courtney. We the came up. Oh, and you didn't even know. I didn't know it. All right, so what we're waiting for now is uh, the full boil. We're waiting for what's called the hot break. Um, so at this point, we've done the recirculation. Um, if you look down in there, you can see some of the particles moving around. Um, but everything's going to, you're going to see a whole bunch of proteins come up. I'll try, hopefully, we can get this filmed. But that's when you know your your ward has come to a boil and is ready to get the party started. You can start your timers, uh, start adding your hops. Um, if that's your schedule, uh, that's all we're waiting for now is the, the boil to start so we can start that timer and get the rest of the party going. Mm, Khaki. That's the next step. We're about to get to the break. Right now it's sticking in up. <laughs> all right, Corey, what we doing here? I'm a wart monger. I'm about to taste the wart. You're a what? Wart monger. W-R-T monger. What is, monger. What does a wart monger Someone do? Someone who that loves to drink wart. <laughs> so the, the wart is all the juice, the beer, the unfermented beer that comes off of all of this. Right. So I feel like I need to taste it. I ain't never had wart. Me either. I might Me be either. a wart monger. It tastes, it tastes like just like kind of like it's, a sweet hot, grainy tea. We're going to convert us all into wart mongers. <laughs> Forget the beer. Give me the wart. It almost feels like a troll or some shit. I want the wart. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you get the true essence of what the base of the beer is going to taste yeah. like and where you're going and where it's going to be. So if the wart is good, the beer is going to be good. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Y'all should drink together. Wart mongering. Yeah, there you go. Scoop it out for us. Okay. I do I do 17 it's gallons, lot. right? It's a lot. In my fermenter. Me and my partner, we drank. Wait, wait, I want some. We drank eight gallons of wort one time. <laughs> what? Eight Damn. gallons of wort? Eight? Eight. You just kept nipping on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I have, I have no choices in this. I'm a wart monger. It don't smell good. Smell like bread. Smells yeah. like bread. Smell mm -hmm. like bread. Oh, this is clean. What beer is this? But. This is a uh, peach tea IPA. Nice. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Good. Yeah. It tastes very clean. Very clean. You can still taste the yeast in it. Well, no yeast ain't, ain't no yeast in it, so you can all well, grain. You, it's all the grain. grain. It's yeah, the grain. grain. I'm sorry. You, it tastes yeah, like bread. bread. But it's but it's sort of sweet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So almost like a like a unsweet sweet tea. Mm. So this is like <laughs> the yeah. So we uh we started boiling, so everything that we oh, broke up. There's so much happening. Yeah. 
It happens quick. See, Look at that. Hot, so that's the hot Look break. Look at that. Said, everything, everything that was on top cleared out, and it's just going now. Nice. A nice ball. And you see this nice cake right here? This nice grain bed. I'm nice right and easy. This is considered a cake. Yeah, yeah, say, yeah, say, yeah this, this is like, like a cake. Because you know what? Just look at it. You see? Mm -hmm. It's a conference. It's like a little cake. Almost like you can scoop it out. Mm -hmm. Just you like um, I mean? when a cake is done, it pulls away from the side of the pan. Yeah, exactly. I see you. Exactly. It, pans, it pulls away from the side I of the pan. I see right. that. You know what I mean? It's so, so, so pulls what away from was, the side of the pot. So he's extracted, he's extracted all the sugars out of this grain right here. So what happened was that. And this is a whole nother process right here. You look at those those husks right there, how they how they partly cracked open. Yeah. That's what we want as brewers, right? And see, we have a whole nother another industry called malting that prepares the grain for us brewers. Malting, which is a whole nother part of the brewing process, because the malters are the one that sets that, that prepare the grain for the brewers to use. You see what I'm saying? But you have no black malt houses in the world. Mm. We can drop at twelve thirty. That's we can drop that in because um, we're doing hop additions at. Uh, oh, so we got four minutes. Okay, okay. Mont, crack it. Ooh. Crack it. So I'm just just dropping it. Yeah, in you there. just drop it in. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, so it's in the cheese cloth, uh basically because that have, actually keeps the particulate from floating freely in the in our in our ward um, because they once they get wet they kind of just mush up mm. and they become gum so that kind of keeps it contained a little bit and comes you said out. this is what those are hops those are pellets okay hops yeah hops um, in their natural form are a soft leafy cone um, but uh, producers will take those cones compress them and, and make pellets. pellets pellets are just a more concentrated form of the, of the hop cones so how much hops do you um, in this particular batch I'm using about six ounces of hops total in the product. Huh. And then um, it really, what flavors you get is really gonna change the base. It's time to drop. Time to drop? All right, let's make oh, it happen. It's time. <laughs> we ready? We ready? One, two. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's it. She dropped it. She dropped it. it like it was hot. How are you supposed to drop it? Like, more that's, that's subtle. A that was a perfect drop for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and see, it's already, it's already puffing up, so it's uh, soaking up some of, that, yeah. uh, some of that liquid. And then the flavor's just going to disperse into that. Um, you, you change your hop schedule, your times, based on the hops that you're using. Because a lot of it has to do with the alpha and even the beta acids that are in those hops. So two and a half ounces of that. This one. This is the next edition I'm gonna put it right here. Let me change that in a little too. So this is the uh, the tea that we're gonna add to uh, to the beer a little bit later in the boil. Uh, I might wait till the very end um, because I don't want to yeah, yeah, yeah. add any um, any harshness to it. Uh, from boiling tea, it's just a cold where I just added the tea bags to some cold water and let it sit, sit in the fridge overnight. So it's a Tezo wild sweet orange tea that I'm using. Um, too bad we don't have smell vision, but I'm gonna let uh, Nicole smell it. Like I said, didn't add any sugar or anything to it, but this is. Oh, yeah, that smells good. Centennial. Say again? We're dropping uh, two and a half ounces of Centennial. And that's it. And we're done. And that's it. So we got two bags in there. When is the next drop? The next drop in 15 minutes is gonna be uh, two and a half ounces of citra hops. But uh, we're gonna get our citrus notes from here. So all those foods are gonna play very well in the finished beer. Bow, we drop. And that man brewing with a cigar, that's a boss right now. You know what I'm saying? How we rolling now? Official. Official. Yeah, grown man stuff, grown man. So yeah, this is um, the last edition. It's a World Flock tablet. Typically do with uh, five minutes left in the boil. It's just a little tablet. Um, I think it's composed of compressed Irish moss. Basically um, takes up uh, any of the excess uh, proteins. Makes for a clearer beer, basically. Star sand bucket full of star sand solution that keeps all my good stuff clean. So pump, pump star sand through this a couple times, boom. We good, we clean, we can test. So we're gonna put this on on here. This is gonna uh, be our hydrometer testing. It's gonna um, see what we're what we're what our uh, gravity numbers are sitting at, so we can potentially see what our alcohol is gonna be sitting at. Refractometer. Yeah, the refractometer. So see, this is where we at. Uh, that's post boil. Post boil. Yeah. Nice. Pre boil was Ooh. one. Pre boil 
Ooh. was 120. So through the refractometer, um, it's basically going to measure the sugar content. Basically. Oh, um, and that that reflects your alcohol content. Yes. So okay. basically, basically, all your alcohol content, uh, your refractometer is going to give you a reading before you add your yeast and after you add your yeast. I'm looking at so looks by the looks of it, we uh, started at eight gallons at the beginning of the boil. Look like we lost about almost a gallon and a half, two gallons almost. We just at uh, look like six and a quarter. So you, this right here is just more or less a making sure everything's clean and making sure that we get the right amount of volume and sugars for our yeast to eat off of mm -hmm. but when it comes to the cold side this is hot side this is called the hot side of the process now when he's talking about in fermentation when he's going to add his pizzas and stuff like that that's the cold side and the cold side that's when it almost become like clay and when it's on the cold side you can do you can make it do any pretty much anything you want depending on what you want to do <laughs> you know what I mean? So he want to add peaches, so he would do that in the cold side. He wouldn't do it on the hot side because it still has to go through what is called primary fermentation. And primary, and primary fermentation is gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna that active part of, of, of when the yeast eating up the sugars in that fermentation, it's gonna eat up all his flavors if he was to add it now. It's gonna, he's gonna lose it all during primary fermentation. That's why he's gonna wait to cool down. He's gonna get involved. You know, he's gonna put everything into the primary fermentation. He's gonna let it ferment. Throughout primary primary fermentation, and then he's going to do all his, his all his add additions with peaches and flavor in secondary because that right there you have to worry about the fermentation eating eating off all those flavors that you want want to keep in the liquid. Okay, at that point it really becomes clay, and you can do whatever you want to with it. At that point, you got oh. herbs, fruit, spices, anything at that point, and just let it sit, and then then we will go back and kind of like. Uh, once we get our concoction rip, uh, right, with, 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 with what we want to do, we'll come back and pull off the spout and kind of like taste it over time to see to make if sure it is that, that desired taste profile that we want, and then we will move it over into the kegging process and let it finish conditioning over there. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Do the same thing, you know. So they, they would do the same thing. They would, they would brew the beer, add all the flavors, and then move it over to the barrel and let it age. You Got know, it. Two years, six months, three years, depending on what what, what you, you want and what you want to do. You know what I mean? Go ahead, so do your thing, bro. Yeah, so we're going to add He's the wort chiller in here, let it get sanitized, just rinse it off real quick. It's clean between each brew, but I'm going to add, like I said, add the wort chiller in here, let it get cleaned off by the stuff that's already in here. It's already uh, boiling, so it will be cleaned. And then we're going to get it uh, flowing through this ice and chilled. We're going to send, basically, this copper uh, coil is going to sit in here. We're going to send cold water through it, and that's going to, the, the, the boiling wort that's coming into contact with the cold, the copper coal actually chill it. And once we get it down to uh, to, uh, to about roughly about 80 degrees, that'll be our pitching temperature. That's when we can add our yeast. We got to clean up, then we done. They done. Uh, yeah, so so that's the next step. We got a couple more steps. We out of this thing, y'all. And he mentioned 80 degrees because that's the ideal that, temperature. That's the ideal temperature that you need to, to, uh, to, to ward off any kind of hot side problems. You dig what I'm saying? So you want your stuff to get down 80 degrees, and now you can start giving it oxygen. Because at this point, yeast wants oxygen. Because yeast needs oxygen to produce more yeast cells. So it's like yeast and oxygen having an origin before they eat. <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's like in layman terms, we have sex, we hungry. Now we eat. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Yeast love it. Yeah, All right, so we're going to stop short. Mm -hmm. So we got the so we got an ice bath in there. Yeah, these are great. And How long what did it take you to chill down? Uh, honestly, uh, in practice, it's been maybe like forty-five minutes because I've never had enough ice. But I think at this point we got enough, so I'm shooting for maybe twenty minutes. One hundred and ninety degrees right now. Okay, so one hundred and ninety degrees is where we're at. The goal is eighty. It's a black Tezo tea. wild sweet tea. Yeah. Wild sweet orange tea. That has a little citrus to it. Mm -hmm. So this is what's going to give it the sweet tea flavor of the peach sweet tea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just pour that on in there. Yes, yeah, so we add one gallon of that into our uh, boil kettle, and it's just going to be going with everything else. Right. Rod cold brewed this last night. He just took his tea bags, put some water in it, let it sit in the fridge, and cold brew. It's nice and nice and rich color today. So we got a lot of good tea flavor out of it. And that's it, get all that goodness.
I said, no I said the word. You said, ain't no way. Said, no way. Watch this. <laughs> we almost done, man. Now, man, that's dope. Your whirlpool works much better than mine. Let me tell you. Right, was, mine don't even get my water to circulate like this. That's an $11 piece. I wish it could circulate like this. $11, man. With your, uh, with your flow. That's how you know that it's on. So we're going to get that spit grain. We're going to save a little bit. Yeah, I'll hold it for you. Bit to a farm, maybe. So we just cleaning up now. Instead of just letting the gravity feed do it, I actually turned on the pump so we can get some uh, get some pump action going. Pulling out the rest, all the water that's in there, moving it into our fermenter. Um, like I said, we got some good aeration doing the whirlpool. But once we get the, the fermenter full, we're going to hit it one more time with our... Uh, with our fermentation wine, I mean with our uh, aeration wine, and we're gonna pitch this yeast. Mm -hmm. You want to you get up and go clean it. Mm -hmm. Just aerating it, get some good, mm -hmm. some good air in it. Mm -hmm. Thing telling us? Um, well, it's just pushing all, because it's airtight, it has a, uh, a seal right here, a seal, okay. a seal gasket. Mm -hmm. So it's actually airtight, so it's actually just pushing with the, the remaining air that's in there out. I'm actually gonna probably change it out since we filled it up so much and uh, put a blow off too so that when the fermentation does start, it won't get sucked back in. The excess gas yeah, can we'll just get pushed out, yep. Okay. Hey man, hey. Hey man, they wanna do all this talking about me and Rod, man. They the default of the start of the show, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause we, they teach y'all there about survival now. Now it is glampers. Which is glorious camping. Am I, am I right? Am I right? You right. right? Because, you because right. we do everything in pristine fashion. Because we are royalty now. But still, at the end of the day, y'all need to get with these people, man. Because y'all know, especially us black men folk, y'all know, bro. Y'all know we get out here, man. And we act like we, we, we don't know how to be out here. You know what I'm saying? We, we played outside when we were 13. Now, if you're if you my age, now you played outside. So learn from these Keep folks. Going. Get back in tune. With what you already know, get your ass outside, learn how to do this camera stuff, because guess what? I got pamper too. I don't know shit about the camera stuff. <laughs> I'm telling you now, but I'm gonna learn. <laughs> Y'all get with these people, man, because this is vital, especially in this day and time, because you never know when you may need this fundamental resource. And this is a skill, Bad. just like brewing beer, just like cooking, just like sewing, this is a Survival. skill that we must learn. Because when, when hey, what you gonna do when they cutting the lights off and your ass in the project on the 16th floor? Let me just tell y'all, I gotta I'm interject. Sorry. I didn't mean to cuss and all that stuff. I'm no, sorry, you're good. Unfiltered. You're good, but don't go nowhere, don't go nowhere. Okay. I just wanna interject because today we've gone through the history of beer making, the history of camping, what our people did historically. And what Corey was just talking about, cooking, brewing, camping, those are lost arts. You know, you think about your grandma that used to make the homemade biscuits, you know, your auntie that used to make the homemade apple pie. Not, not the apple pie with the Pillsbury crust where she chop it. That's semi-homemade. I'm talking about where she made that crust and she rolled it out and she put it in her refrigerator and did all that good stuff. These are lost arts and what we're trying to do is connect you with your roots so you can relearn these things. But that's all I got to say.